Hey, folks. Holy Tempest Fugit Batman. Time flies when you're having fun. Hey, welcome to another episode of Houdini Secrets Live. I'm Chris, and welcome to the weekly broadcast for Houdini Secrets and all things Houdini related in conjunction with TechArt EDU and uh, the Orlando Houdini Users Group, which uh, will actually, when I get around to it, hopefully we'll be able to have uh, one of our first establishing meeting within the next, um, within the month. Uh, we'll check for by the end of July or by the early August, we'll have our first meeting. Okay, I promise we'll get something going. All right. In the meantime, we have a tree to finish up. What we're going to do today is we're going to finish up the tree, put up a couple polishing touches on it, but really what we're all we're going to do is get the tree set up so that we can go in and get it looking right in UE4. The process that we would take in Unity would be a little bit different, but ultimately it's uh, a lot of the same work. So uh, hopefully what we're doing should be able applicable for just about anything, depending on where we want to go. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my old Houdini session. Oh, by the way, if you are looking for the Houdini session, you can download the project at 626 uh, off of the, Orla or, uh, the uh, Houdini Orlando user group uh, uh, GitHub site. And uh, they, you should be able to download this stuff and get this stuff. And so it is available, and I'm posting it. I'm going to post all the contents of today's lesson on there as well. All right, cool. So what we're going to do is we are going to export this bad boy to uh, UE4. And UE4, oh, look at, oh, look at that. I have to change this over or to here so that we actually see what's on my monitor. Okay, now you guys should see what is on my monitor. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I need to pull up. Uh, uh, what are I just going to pull up? I forgot. Oh, yeah, 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 my notes. Oh, well, screw the notes. Well, let's, let, we'll let <laughs> let's wing it. Okay, we're going to need three things if we're going to export the tree to UE4. Now, UE4 is kind of sensitive and it needs a whole bunch of things. First, what it needs is it needs textures. You got it, your, your object has to have textures if it's gonna go into UE4. <coughs> Excuse me. It didn't used to, but now you're gonna need to create textures for it. Uh, every uh, single object has to have texture coordinates. The object has to have a material. If your object doesn't have a material, it won't build correctly. And in addition to that, it also has to have normals. So you've got to have all three of those things. So let's go into our tree to figure out what it's missing. All right. Now here is our big old tree. And this is where we left things off last week. Now here we're in good shape. Look at this. What we did was we put normals on uh, after our UV quick shade here. And this is where our bark is coming in. And you notice that we have our bark in the tree right there. And then we have what's coming out of here, our leaves coming out of here. And these have been normalized too. So we've got that together and we merge them all together. So great, ultimato. Okay, that's a very good thing. We have uh, just the right contents required in order to make this work. All right, so what else do we need? We need that and we need textures. Okay, well we have textures on our bark which is good, and here is uh, where we applied the cylindrical texture map to uh, a, an abstract cylindrical, and then we use attribute copy to copy it to our bark that we fabricated out there, so that works. And what about our leaves? Yep, our leaves have a texture. Here is our UV texture map, and this is using orthographic projection, and it projects it right onto here, so this is good to go as well. Okay, and so we have texture maps taken care of, and we have our 
normal's taken care of. Only thing left is the materials. I do not believe, I do not see a material on the bark at all. So let's go ahead and create some bark material. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop, right click down here, and then I'm going to drop in a material network. Easy enough here, material network, and then I'll call it bark mats. For bark materials, bark mats. Oh, that's bar mats. That's like something that people stand on when they're drinking their Guinness. Okay, bark mats. Okay, I'm going to double click. I'm going to double click my material network to go inside of it. Now, there's nothing in here. Now, the only thing I really want in here that's pretty much my all purpose shader is my principled shader. So I'm going to hit tab here and type in the word principled. Okay, there's my principled shader. And I'm just going to call this temp bark because that's all that really is. I'm going to make sure to change the base color over to white. Not that this is actually going to go into it, but this is just going to be a placeholder. Okay, I've got that going here. So let's, before we, uh, let's say, after we've got the normal here, let's go ahead and put the material on our bark here. So I'm going to just insert a material node. Okay, dr dropping the material node right in there. And so for the material, I'm going to navigate with this plus thelio over to the tree gen. And there's my bark mats and a temp bark. And as always, whenever I work with pathing inside my digital asset, I always use ex export relative paths, except. Okay, cool. Now the bark turned white because the, the uh, principal shader is just white. And that's all we need. So that's fine. I'm going to change the name of this called uh, temp bark. And I could say underscore material, just so I know what it is. Okay, temp bark material. All right, let's take a look and see what we have in the leaves. Okay, looks like here, it looks like we've got a leaf material already on here. And honestly, I don't really care what it is. This looks like, okay, temp leaf. It's another principal shader. Okay, it doesn't really matter so much what it is as long as it's got some kind of material. Okay, we are in good shape, gang. Okay, now I do notice here that it, it, there is a, uh, a little thing that says, okay, mismatch of attributes on the inputs was detected. Some attributes values may not be initialized. Okay, uh, side, u, up, grad, width. Okay, these are the extra uh, parameters that we have to deal with. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to go in and say an attribute, remove. Attribute delete. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And I'm going to look through the attributes to see if there's any attributes I can get rid of. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at this. Point attributes. There's position. Okay, bark scale. Nah, I don't need that anymore. Oops, I need. I don't need grad. Don't need bark scale. Uh, length. Nope. Level. Nah. Side. Not anymore. You. Do I need U? Well, we need the UV parameters, but that parameter is called UV, so and that would be in the vertex. So in the point, we don't need that. And we don't need the up vector anymore. We don't need the UVAL. And we don't need the width. Hey, hey, that looks like it uh, took the, the little uh, warning went away. So I'm going to call this uh, just clean up, clean up bark. Clean up bark. Okay, then we've cleaned up the bark, and I'm going to put the display onto that. Okay, we've got rid of all of ours. We should be uh, in really good shape. So let's go ahead and, um, okay, I am going to, after this merge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a transform node down here. And you'll see why in a little bit here. And this transform, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm just going to call this, Output scale. Okay, now if I manipulate this output scale parameter, does this scale my whole tree? Yeah, it does. Okay, that's just what I want. I'm going to leave it at 1 for the time being here. And then 
at this tree out, I'm going to pull down there and I'm going to put a ROP output FBX. ROP FBX output. Okay, we're going to output this to FBX. Now, here's a sneaky feat for you, gang. FBX is good, but it's not the only thing that UE4 will understand. You can output an OBJ file as well. For you old schoolers out there, you'll remember OBJ is the old format that Wavefront used to use. You're probably going, what in Goonie Google was Wavefront? Once a long time ago, kiddies, before there was a, such a thing as Maya, there was a thing called Wavefront, and it was the advanced visualizer. And that's what was the animation state-of-the-art software circa 1988. Woohoo! Hey, that was state of the art. I was blown away when I saw Wavefront for the first time, and it format was OBJs. And OBJs are still a good format because it's primitive and it's ASCII, and you could jump right in there and get it done. It's nowhere near as dynamic as FBX or USD for that matter, but sometimes you just need some primitive object description language in order to store your objects, and sometimes OBJ does the job really, really well. In fact, I debugged a problem with um, uh, using OBJs just the other day when I discovered that all Houdini objects need to have texture coordinates if the object is going to build inside UE4. The object won't build correctly in UE4 unless it has texture coordinates. Now, I had no idea that that was the issue and but I needed to use my OBJ files in order to figure that out in order to debug it. If it wasn't for OBJ, I would have never have figured it out. All right, for this uh, ROP FBX, I'm going to call this uh, uh, output FBX. All right, now for this, I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to go to the job. Okay, and, uh, and then I'm going to go to my geometry folder, and then I'm going to put uh, my tree.fbx. Okay, great. I'm just going to go ahead and save this file before anything bad happens. And we're going to call this advanced tree 07 underscore 02. Hip. Okay. Uh, oh. Overwrite, no, I want it to go to 073 because today is the third, right? Okay, 0703, okay, very good. Now, what I want to try to do is m streamline my digital asset in order to uh, prevent the user from having to go into the digital asset in order to manipulate things. So I'm going to go back up a level to this tree gen level. I'm going to right click and grab the top type properties menu. And then I'm going to add myself a new folder just devoted to export. So I'm going to grab a folder and drop it under root. And I'm going to change my name to output. All right. Then while this is still highlighted, I'm going to drop into my tree gen and take a look at this. What I'm first I'm going to do is for the output scales, I'm going to grab this guy, uniform scale, and I'm going to drag it to output and just leave it as is. And then here's my output FBX node. I'm going to grab the, the title output file. I'm going to drag and drop that into output. Now, here it is, gang. Um, don't mess up when you're doing this. I want to create this button here where it says save to disk. I want ex to expose this to the digital asset label. So I'm going to just press on save to disk and I'm going to drag and drop it right under it, so it's in the output folder here. So it says save the disk. And if I click accept, click OK, and then, all right, there it is. It's saved. And now, if we go to tree gen, if we click output, we see we have a uniform scale. And the output file is this, exactly what we said. And then we can scale our tree however, so we want it. Okay. And then we have save the disk. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll say, all right, we're ready to rock and roll. I'm going to call this my tree underscore zero one FBX. Save to disk. 
Okay, it's doing something. Okay, it saved the disk. Now what we're doing is we're ready to go to UE4. All right, I'm not going to spend too much time going over the UE4 qualifications because this is a Houdini class and it's not necessarily a UE4 class. But what I wanted to do is have everything go to that. If you want a copy of this uh, UE4 project, uh, I was not able to put it onto the GitHub site, and I'll try to see if it is later. But for the time being, if you would like a copy of this UE4 project, send me email, chris at techartedu.com, or correspond to either this uh, YouTube site or in to the, uh, the Tech Artist uh, LinkedIn page or the Facebook page, and I will get that off to you. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, UE4. All right, so I have my content folder here that's looking just about right. What I want to do is uh, where I'm going to go into Maps, and I'm going to create myself a brand new level that I can show all this stuff. And I'll say New Level. Okay, I'm just going to grab the default. Keep it simple. And then I know that uh, this is probably going to need to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to multiply this by 10 so that it gives me lots of room to play with. Oh, I don't need to do the Z. I can keep that value of 1. Okay, and then I'm going to save current, and then save current under maps, and I'm going to call it uh, HSL for Houdini Secrets Live Foliage. All right, I'm going to save that as that. Okay, good. Now I'm going to come back up here to content, and now I already have a geometry folder here, and there's types here, so there's trees and trees types too. I'm going to create a new folder just to keep things separate. So I'm going to go to new folder, and I'm going to say HSL underscore foliage. All right, we've got a foliage. And now what I want to try to do is I just want to bring in just the... Uh, the Houdini object as is. I'm going to right click on this, hit import to game. Okay, there's my thing. And then, okay, there's my object. This is my tree 01. And there's an FBX file. And, hmm, that's looking kind of small. Hopefully, that's got enough information. Uh, I don't know if it has enough, but we'll have to wait and see and find out. But this is what this is for. This is just a test. Okay, gang, here's the thing. I'm gonna get, first thing I'm going to do is hit reset to default just to make sure that anything I was monkeying around with doesn't have it. Now, we, when, we went into, when we import into UE4, we just want to turn off the skeletal mesh. We want it to auto-generate the collision and leave all that gobbledygook here. We want it to leave just everything as defaults here as we go. The only thing I'm going to want to change here is the uniform scale, and I'm going to change this to 100. Now, the reason why I changed this to 100 is because Houdini units are in centimeters and UE4 units are in meters. And when you transport, transform centimeters into meters and so forth, you get a 100 scale difference. Oh, I'm sorry. Houdini's, uh, it says file units equals centimeters there on the FBX file information. And so it's just the opposite way around. The Houdini ima image is smaller than it is in UE4, and so typically we have to scale up the Houdini stuff 100 times. So I'm going to import all. Then we should end up with something here. Well, it's going. Okay, good. We got here is my tree asset, and we've got the two temporary uh, assets that we uh, for the the materials of that. Those are just placeholders, so I don't really care. I want to go ahead and drop this in here. All right. All right. So this is good. So the first thing I want to try to do is test to make sure that this thing bakes. I found it that sometimes Houdini assets, if you don't do everything correct, they don't bake properly when you put them into UE4. So what I'm going to do is make sure that this is temp bark and temp leaf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately build the lighting on this. 
And this should tell me whether uh, the object has uh, all the right elements or not, because it should look white. Baking the uh, scene will uh, tell us if there's anything missing. All right, so we're getting some weird elements over there, and our sh shadows are definitely not looking pretty. So we're going to have to play around with the shadows, but that's a whole other issue. But if I was to play, oops, and it looks like I put my character at the wrong place. Okay, where's my character? Oh, there it is. So where's my player start? Okay, now if I hit play, there we go. And now I'm able to scoot around and run around the tree. That tree is looking really big. Okay, but the lighting overall works. I see shadows over here. The shadows need to be tweaked. But everything is still ultimately working the way we want. OK, so how would we need to scale this down? So this tree, we scaled it up 100 times here. So I'm wondering what we should do in order to get this to work. Well, anyway, that's something to work on. I'm going to return back to Houdini. And I'm going to try uh, to, OK, everything is working the way we want it to. And so let's work out this uh, scaling issue. Now, what we had to do is we had to scale this thing up 100% when we exported it. So what would happen if we exported this and then we scaled this not 100%, because it looks like this thing is made out of scale. So if we went ahead and scaled this to be 50 times, woo, that's big. All right, there it is. It's nice and big. So it's a that, and I'm gonna say save to disk. I'm just gonna rewrite there. I'm gonna go back into UE4, and I'm gonna delete my tree. And then I'm going to delete my tree again here. OK, now I'm going to re-import this character. OK, now instead of where it says import uniform scale 100, I'm going to say 1. Because we're doing the scaling inside of Houdini, and I kind of like that because then I will remember that I said, hey, dude, you need to scale this thing up by 50 times in order to get it to work correctly. And so it's a good reminder for me that it's on the artist's responsibility inside of the Houdini side to make sure that the Houdini asset corresponds to the uniform or uni the UE4 Destiny environment. So I'm going to go ahead and import all with that. OK, everything looks about the same. Let me go drag this in here. And my character, I see how well does my character correspond with that? All right, let's move this around. All right, play. OK, let's see how well the effect worked. We scaled it in Houdini. OK, the tree is still a little bit big, but not terribly much. I mean, the leaves are about the size of his guy's head. So I'm going to play around with this one more time. I'm going to get rid of this, delete it one more time. I'm going to force delete it. 
I'll go back to Houdini. And then instead of uniform scale 50, let's try a uniform scale of 25. Save to disk. Now let's go back to UE4. Okay, import. Import all. Everything looks good. Okay, now if I hit play, it looks like our thing might be a little bit too small now. Oh, it's not too bad. It could be worse. So our tree is over there. So overall, not too shabby. Now we're good to go for that for the time being. Why not? Okay, cool. Let's work on the tree because we have a little bit more doctoring to do. Now the first thing I want to try to do is let's work on the leaves and the textures. Oh wait, do we even have any leaves? I just even noticed there. Do we have any leaves here? Inside of there. Yeah, we've got leaves. They're fine. We just don't see them. All right. Now, let's take a look. I'm going to go open Photoshop here. There is my leaf. And it's a pretty simplistic looking leaf. Not too complicated. And uh, really not too sophisticated. So what I did was I said, okay, this is not, too, uh, not looking too groovy. I'm going to go and find some better leaf textures, hopefully one that is PBR compliant. So what I did was I went over onto textures.com. Yes, there is a website called textures.com. And where be she? Ah, here we go. And look at this. I found a, w a little website that has scanned maple leaf trees. Now these look are, are looking good. Look at this. They've got the whole thing for the whole PBR treatment. Not too shabby. Okay, so what I did was I went ahead and downloaded all of these. Uh, and so I can take a look at them, you know, in Photoshop. Now here's my um, albedo. And there's my uh, alpha. There's my height. There's my normal map. There's my uh, roughness map. All right, cool. But honestly, I don't have a good strategy for you guys right now in order to handle texture atlasing and pull in random leaves. Because it looks like here there are three, six, ten different leaves in here that we could potentially lose. Now, that would be a cool thing to add for our digital asset is to uh, create various different leaves uh, on here. But I'm going to keep things simple. Um, and then I'm only going to capture this one leaf here. Now, this one leaf is, I'm going to focus just on this one. This is looking pretty simplistic and pretty sexy. So what I did was then I went in and I cut out this texture element from every one of my um, layers. And let me see if I can open these. Uh-huh. And here we go. Cannot complete because it's not valid for what? All right, let's try to import this. Okay. Now let's try this again. Open as. It still doesn't like these. No. What are they, TIFFs? No. So let's try to go ahead and import them. No. So let's try to just go ahead and drag them and then drop them in here. There they all are. 
As you can see, what I did was I used the um, the clipping function. I put these uh, guidelines inside my Photoshop, and I used this to use the cropping tool in order to crop these all out of here. So I've got my albedo map. And I made sure to put these crop lines exactly the same on every one of these in order to get all of my PBR layers working good. Here's my alpha. There's my height map. And there's my normal map. All right. So the first thing we I did was, all right, I've got all these layers now. Let's go and change the shape of our leaf and our Houdini object. I've got my sexy new layers here. So what is it? Do I have a uh, a shape of the leaf here? So I have a, the shape, the leaves. Look at that. I don't even have a uh, I don't even have a texture image in order to scan from. So for the geometry here, what I need to do is put in a parameter here for the shape of my leaf. So I so my user doesn't have to go in to send it to the tree. So I'm going to go into my type properties. And for the shape, trunk, branches, bark, leaves. OK, let's drop into here. And I'm going to go, OK, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and drop into these leaves. And here's my trace. Uh, so here we go. I'm going to go grab my input image and then drag this into the geometry here so it's on leaf. Oops. No. Nope. Okay, so it's there. I want to make sure it's in the geometry folder and I'm going to move it so it is first. Okay, click accept. Click okay. OK, so there's my leaf image. Uh, so I don't want to use my original kind of like primitive looking leaf texture. I want to use the one I just grabbed. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. And here it is. Uh, I saved all my images. Oh, there's my text, my alpha. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. OK, what that did was that it immediately changed the shape of all my leaves to something a little bit more proper. And I'm looking at this tree, and I'm going, well, look at this. Things are awfully skinny at the end. Let's make things a little bit bigger. So on the branches, uh, so the branch length, the branch gravity, branch ramp. OK, so the bark, do we have a, uh, OK, I'm for the edge where it tapers to 0. I'm going to see if we can move that up here. Now, there we go. And does that uh, change the shape of my, uh, it's thinking. Oh, there it is. Let's bring this up all the way over here. Okay, so this is going up, is like, okay, give it to me. This is really slow. Okay, are you done? I'll just have to wait for it to finish. I'm a little bit too click happy here, gang. Okay, so we put up the edge of the thing so we can see our branches a little bit more. Okay, good. And while we're at it, let's just go in and add some more leaves. So here we go, the leaves. Okay, we have 250 leaves. Oh, let's go, let's go for broke, gang. Let's go for bum, bum, bum. Just put a zero at there. Live dangerously. Yeah. If I hit end, oh, we have 2,500 leaves. Woo! That's a big. Okie dokie. I'm going to go ahead and click uh, my output. 
and we hit the uniform scale. I'm going to call this tree 02.fbx. All right, I'll scan to disk. Now, this might take a little bit while because this is outputting FBX. Oh, it's not too bad. All right, let's go back to UE4 and pull this bad critter in here. I'm going to right click, import to geometry, and I should see my tree 02. Notice that it is significantly bigger there because it's got a lot more leaves. I click in open. Now we left everything as default, so we should be ready to rock and roll. So click import all. We should just be ready to go. Uh oh. What is this? Failed to import. Please see output log for details. Okay, fine. Let's go check out the output log. All right. Now I just so happen to have the output log there because we dealt with this before. But if you didn't have there, you would go to Window, Developer Tools, Output Log, and Let's take a look at this last line. It says, error, does package exist? Does package failed? None is a standard unreal. No. Okay, so that means is that um, something in Python happened because none is a Python word. Um, and we said, okay, failed to create foliage. For that. So does it say why? Okay, it doesn't explain why. All right. Now this is where you put on the soothsaying hat and so forth. Okay, gang, you know what? I am not going to go uh, explain, I'm not going to explain you the hours of time that it took me to figure out what was wrong with this. But ultimately, the FBX is not writing out. And what happened here is, let me show you what happened. I'll, I'll give you guys a hint, I'll give you guys a clue. If we go into the tree green, Everything, you know, works out totally fine. Everything looks great. Everything looks copacetic. But here's the problem. We go inside, make leaves. All right. So what we, what, in the end of the day, here's all our copies of leaves. And they're all there, and everything's looking fine. You know, nothing out of the ordinary. I can't, nothing jumped out. So I had to put on my Sherlock Holmes hat and dive into this. And so I did with this. Uh, so here it is before the copy. I want to take a look at the thing. It's a remesh. OK, everything's looking fine. I don't see anything that looks particularly offensive. You know, this leaf is pretty sexy looking and much better than my leaf. If I was to click resample here. OK, everything's looking good. Everything's looking, oh, that's looking really good there. This is before the resample. Okay. Everything, I'm uh, going to go back up here all the way to the trace. There's my original object, and I'm going to trace this all the way through here. And so all my stuff is looking good, and I don't see any problems. All right. Now, gang, I'm going to give you a clue. Is the, This was really hard to see, and the fact that I found this as soon as I did is purely a miracle. What happened was I turned on the points, and everything's looking fine. And then I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Maybe you do. And then I put on the numbers. And I just start following it, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way through. Everything's looking fine. Until we came to this. 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. Wait a second. 73. What in Goonie Goo Goo is Vertex 73 doing out here? I do not know. Is the is a miracle. It doesn't make a sense. All right, so I have no idea what happened there, but needless to say, it's not good. This is the critter that's causing it. So what I did was I backed up into the resample. Okay, so it's happening before there. I've used move to rightmost. Oh, I had to turn these off. Okay, look at this. Somewhere along the way. 
This texture map picked up an island. This is so wacky. I have no idea. Look at that. There's a hole in the texture. Now, that means that the the hole happened way up here in the tra in the, in the initial trace. Yep, there it is. How it happened there, I do not know. And honestly, at this point in time, I do not know what the right Houdini command is in order to um, get rid of a hole. There, are, I'm sure that there is a Houdini tool to do this, but at this moment in time, I just don't know what it is. So I'm going to use the very primitive way, and I'm going to do it old school, and I'm just going to remove it by hand. And do I know what uh, these numbers are here? Okay, it's 1160. Okay, now this is, like I said, what I could do here is I could just put a delete stop here and then bark out these numbers, but there's something easier that I can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Houdini's interactive editor to m muck with this. So I'm going to click onto here and go to where it says points, and then I'm just going to hit enter while in there. And so that puts me in the interactive mode, and then I'm going to just click onto here and then highlight all that, and I grabbed all these points, right? And now, once I've had those points highlighted, I'm going to hit the tab key, and then I'm going to type in the word blast. Okay, that blasted that. I just said there, and what that did was it inserted a blast node in here, and whatever points were in there before, it's now in the group node, and it blasted away those points. Not the most elegant and certainly not procedural, not the way that, but let's go see if this is the real reason. If I click on remesh, okay, everything is looking good here. Everything's looking fine. Okay, let's test to see if this actually does work now. I'm going to put my display note back on the leaves out and come back up here. Okay, I'm going to go to my tree gen. Save to disk. All right, now let's go back to UE4. And let's try to import our tree again. My tree number two. Open. Okay, everything should be good. Import all. Let's go ahead and build it. All right, so far so good. I'm going to go delete this old tree, and then I'm going to put into this tree, and... So far, so good. We've got, we've got two items in here. Let's see if this builds. Uh oh, it's hanging up there. Oh, it got through. Map check found some issues. What are its issues? It says has overlapping UVs. Okay. Okay, so we have to clean up our UV. Enable correct color to visualize. Okay, so I need to clean up my UVs here. But it overall worked. Okay, so we have 2,500 leaves in here. And so we're styling good. All right. So we've got all these objects here, and we've got all these texture maps. So let's bring in these texture maps and see if they can look good. So I'm going to click in here, create a new folder, and I'm going to call it uh, Leaf Textures. Leaf Textures. I'm going to double click in here, and then I'm going to import all of these leaf textures. 
All right, so I'm going to go to foliage demo, and I saved all these to my texture thing. Okay, there it is. There's all my leaf textures. I am just going to import all of these right in here. Okay, there it goes. Now what we could do here, and if I was to you know, be thorough, I'd go and open every one of these and then update things. And so this one is fine, so I just leave this as is. We need the full color. Now this one, we only need one channel, so I'm going to change this over to grayscale. And then save. You know, might as well save a little bit of texture space. Okay, we've got our... Uh, we have our offset here, and this one also is grayscale, but UE4 already popped it in grayscale for me. So thank you very much, UE4. Okay, now this transformed this into a normal map, so it knows that this is now uh, not to be treated as colors. This is uh, uh, to be treated as a normal map. Click File, okay, Save. Okay, here we have is the looks like a transparency. Okay, this is black and white, so this once again this can be grayscale. It's just a map. Okay. And the transmission, this is color, so default uh, DXT5, uh, good enough. All right, cool. Now, inside of this, I have already created a material. And this material is stored right in here. Okay, so here it is, M leaves two, I believe. Golly, I cannot remember. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna open this up and make sure to check out this. Okay, this isn't it. This is a instance. This is tr with the translucency. Okay. Uh, is this it? Okay, uh, this is the translucency too. All right, so if I click on here, leaves one. Do we have the, uh, I believe it's this one. So let's take a look at where the parent is on this. Uh, the parent M foliage. Okay, if I click on M foliage here, there it is. Okay, so there's my thing. Let's take a look at this, what this looks like. Okay, there's all my thing. There's my there's all my maps, the base color, opacity, roughness, normal, height map, AO, and translucency. Okay, we've got all that. Everything turned on. And then here it is, our uh, leaves, waving, intensity, the simple grass wind. Okay, this is all pretty straightforward. Notice here that this is a masked uh, transparency. So it's so believe it or not, when it says masked, what happens is it tells the shader what pixels to render and what not to render, and it's getting its information from the opacity. Uh, but ugh, look at that. Uh, that that's something. something. And we're going to write two-sided foliage, so this renders both sides. Okay, that's cool. I think we should be good enough. So if we have M foliage, and then what I'm going to do is right-click on there and say Create Material Instance. I'm going to call this MI. My maple leaf. All right, so let's say is alpha on? Yes. So let's turn that on. Okay. Oh, it turns all the alpha on here. Okay, good. But this is not the what we want. So the base color is. Um, oh, what did we call that? Um, golly, I cannot remember. Oh my, what is it? If I go back up here to the content, uh, we go into the geometry, HS, HSL foliage, and my leaf textures. Okay, textures are come, they call it Maple 02. Okay, so here we go. So we're gonna look up Maple 02. Okay, it's crop. Okay, this is for the base color, so we're looking for the albedo. Uh, 
Okay, we've got that. Okay, so there's my tree. So there's my uh, height map. Okay, so let's go grab the uh, the height map. I don't want the normal. Okay, pine bark. Uh, we want the height. Okay, we've got. Oh, that's a pine bark. I don't want that. I want my maple. Dad got it. Okay, so here is here it is. It's right here. Arg. There's my height. Okay, there's my normal map. Where's my normal map? There's my normal map. And there's my opacity to get my masks working right. I say maple. Alpha, that's what we want. There we go. And the roughness. Maple roughness. And here's my translucency. And here's my maple. There's my translucency. Okay. Now there we go. This isn't looking too bad. All right, there's one of my leaves, and it's waving around. Okay, it's looking pretty sexy. So what is it? here it is, am I my maple leaf? I'm going to go ahead and s file save as, and so I'm going to go HSL foliage, and I'm going to leave that with there. I'm going to say my maple leaf, am I my maple leaf, save it right here, save. All right. So here's my texture. So here it is, my object. So let's put the, uh, for the leaf here, put this in for the leaves. Okay, so something isn't lining up here. All right, so we're going to have to figure that one out. All right, now for the bark, let's go and figure out what the bark is. We'll, we'll go and come back to this tree, but while we're at it, let's go look at the bark. So do I have any kind of bark assets here for material? Bark, okay, let's see, bark one. All right, there we go, there's our bark one. So we're missing our leaves. So what can we do about that? Well, we've got this, uh, it's like, nah. Okay, we're gonna have to put on our, um, once again, we're going to have to put on our thinking caps in order to figure out what is wrong with this. Why aren't our leaves showing up? Okay, I'm going to leave that here so we're almost there. All right, so let's go back to Houdini and find out what is wrong with our leaves. So I'm going to go into my tree gen. And I'm going to go into my leaves. There's my leaf. Okay, click. There he is. I'm going to turn out that. So we should be getting this to look in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my material. And we have that. And let's go ahead and uh, let's see. We have the textures. The opacity is right. So we're going to leave that. So here we go for the tacity for, for the base color. Let's go ahead and put the base color in here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my albedo. You hear that? Okay, so we're n we're still not lining up here on there, so that's not right. So we're not lining up here. What about my transparency? So the fact that uh, my albedo here isn't coming through here thinks that, that something is possibly wrong here. And so for the transparency, I think this is going to look just as screwed up. I'm going to go and put the transparency on here just as well. And this is probably going to make the leaf disappear, I imagine. Transparency. Opacity scale. Okay, so specular screen emission. 
sheen. Okay, so, oh, transparency. Oh, there it is. Yep, there it is. It's invisible. Yeah, just as I thought. Okay, so let's go take a look at our, the way we created the texture. Maybe the texture wasn't created very well originally. So I'm going to hit U to go back up. So let's go over here, look at this. Okay, we, here we have the trace, which is that object right here. And then we have the blast that got rid of the island. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay, then we have transform there. And then we put the texture on here. And there is our orthographic texture. And then we apply the material. Okay, so I have a hunch. I wonder what happened if we were to for the you, if we did this before the transform and put the the texture map on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and shake this out of here, like a shake it like a mad dog. Okay, we got it out of there. So I'm gonna go in and put it right after the blast and then put this before the rotation. Okay, so this is what the texture should look like uh, here, because this is where the uh, the texture map is like laid out. It's laid vertically and not horizontally. All right, and then we transform it, and then we apply the material. I wonder if we apply the material. It should be fine, actually, but just to make sure, I'm going to shake this like a mad dog. Okay, good. We got this out of here. I'm going to drop the material right into there. All right, so does this look good here? UV texture. So I'm going to take a look at this texture here and this UV map here. And I'm going to come over here to the perspective of the new cam. And I'm really pulling out the... Uh, Where's my, oh, okay. I'm not seeing any texture coordinates on here. So this is not the case. So let's take a look at this. P, oh, look at this. It's orthographic, but it's projected on the y-axis. Man, was I smoking crack on here? We don't need it to be projected along the y-axis. Look at this. Jeez Louise, I really was smoking crack. All right, look at this. This leaf is lined up so it's on the y-x plane. It's not on the uh, the Y plane. If we're projecting from the Y, that means we're projecting it down. Let's go ahead and project this from the Z axis. Okay, now let's take a look at the texture coordinates. Aha! Look at that. And if we put the material on it, are we going to see anything? No, it's not going to see anything. But I have a hunch that this is laid out the way exactly the way we want it to. So if we get the, oh, look at that. It's close, but it looks like it's shifted off here. So what I'm going to do is my uh, texture coordinates, I'm going to offset it a little bit in X or U. And a little bit in V. And it's still not quite right. So I'm going to shift this over here a little bit over to here. And then I'm going to scale it a little bit in this. OK, so we're still not there yet. So we see you need to scale this up some. Oh, we're getting, making it smaller. OK. So I am translating this the wrong direction. All right, if we get this over here. And then if I reduce the scale and pull this across, hey. There we go, let's pull that offset over just a wee bit more. Okay, now I might wanna just 
decrease that and offset the right just a wee bit more. Okay. Hey, check it out. That looks pretty sexy. Okay, so it looks like our texture is pretty much on there. Okay, let's see if this translates all the way through. Okay, click that on to our leaves and Click up here. Oh, wait a second. We've got the transparency on here. Uh, I did, okay, so we're, this should be looking good. Okay, so everything should look fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save this just so I don't lose things. Save. And let's go ahead and output yet once again. Uh, oh, wrong place. Tree gen. Save to disk. All right, let's go back into UE4. And I'm going to see if I can just update my tree without having to read everything in. So I don't need to change everything. So I'm going to go re-import with new file. Oh, just re-import. It's thinking. It's either going to crash or do nothing. Okay, I'm still not getting it. Oh, re-importing. Okay. My machine's a bit slow. It's a bit old. Oh, check it out, gang. We have leaves in our trees. Let's build this to see what the lighting is going to look like. Ho oh, ho, check it out. We actually fixed our texture map issue along as well. Our texture coordinates are now cleaned up. Okay, check it out, gang. Oh, look at that terrible shadow. That's a whole nother issue. But okay, check it out. All right, and there is our procedural looking tree. All right, things are looking pretty sexy here, gang. All right. Cool. All right, folks. Now there's a lot more that we could do with this. One of the first things I think I could do is fix these shadows. But this is a UE4 issue. That's not a Houdini issue. But what I could do here is, lo and behold, I forgot to scale the leaves. These leaves don't scale. And so they're all the same scale. So what I could possibly do here is change the scale. So I do know that if I have the shape and then I have the leaves, and the, the leaf scale here, the leaf seed, I wanted to try to do here. So what I could do is put some randomness into the leaf scale. I've never tried this before, but let's see what happens. Um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's see. If we want these leaves to, s these leaves to scale, sometimes we want them to scale down to 50%, and let's just say we want them to scale up to 200%. Okay, so let's see what happens if we can do this. I'm just curious to see what would happen. I'm just playing around here, gang. I like to play. Thank you for allowing me to play. All right, so if we're here at this remesh node, there's our leaf. And it's at the origin, so it's at a good place. And so, yeah, there's our x, y, and z axis. So if I was to put a transform node,
onto here. Now, if I wanted to just, tr let's see, if I was to scale uh, the, uh, I would want to scale it in the uh, x direction, and that would be length, and then y direction would be width. So if I scaled this, does this work? So this is scale, yeah, it does. And this, and that causes it to scrunch. All right, and does this cause this to scale? Okay, cool. All right, you know what? I could do this in the transform, but right now I'm feeling kind of like in a attribute wrangle node, so I'm going to go and go in a point wrangle here. Uh huh. I'm going to go add a point wrangle. More vex. Vex is good for your soul, gang. Here, let's go random leaf scale. So random leaf scale. All right. So we've got our leaf scale. What's our what? What is our leaf scale? Okay, we've got leaf seed, and that's called leaf seed. And then we have our master seed. And then each leaf has a number. Okay. I get it. We got leaf seed and then what's master seeds? Okay, master seed, leaf seed. Okay, and then we have the number of every thing because we have a copy here. Okay. So let's do this here. Uh copy here. Let's go to stamp and stamp attributes. So we're going to go rand scale, rand scale. All right. And so what do we want to do is we want to create a random number somewhere between eh, 0 and 1. And we want to take under consideration all of those uh, channel values. So I'm going to hit Control E, and we're going to add all that together here. So I'm going to just say rand. Keep it simple. Rand. Okay, we're going to add all these up. So I'm going to go ch dot dot in there. Open close parentheses. Open close close. Go dot dot slash dot dot slash uh, leaf seed. Yeah, there it is, leaf seed. And then I'm just going to leave that as is. I'm going to say apply. And does this work? Well, there's a random number in there. All right, cool. And then I'm going to add one more channel. Plus, uh, let's see, uh, plus, 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 plus. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I want the master seed. So instead of leaf seed, we want master seed. Click apply. Does that still work? All right. Yes, it does. Okay, so let's add the point number here. And what is the point number? Uh, plus, oops, plus, and then it's dollar. Copy number, point number, PT? Oh, geez, I cannot remember. Okay, I can't remember. And maybe this copy stamp will uh, tell me what is the local uh, attribute name. Oh, if I only remembered. Uh-oh. Okay, PT, capital PT. All right. So hopefully that works. So at, oh, that should be a dollar. Oh, there it is. It was there all along. P, T. Is that right? Yes. Oops. Click apply. All right. Everything is copacetic. Okay, so we now have a random scale now for every single one of our leaves. Every leaf is going to be unique in size. Okay, so let's keep things simple here. And let's get our... Um, First, we have to say get our uh, random value. Okay, uh, say float. 
I'll call it R val for random value equals stamp and we want to get it from the copy now so dang dang so dot dot slash copy one and then we want well what was the name of that variable called again ran scale I'm going to make sure that this comes through here see Okay, ran scale, and then we have to put in an initial value of that. And so if this doesn't find anything, I don't want it to, yeah, 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 let's put an initial value of zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Okay, so we want this uh, value to kind of like scale go either between uh, one half to t well, let's just say let's say one half to one and a half, yeah, somewhere in there. So therefore, we have uh, so we know we, we want this to go between our val. Then we know you need to do we need to double its size. Or no, since we do that, we just need to subtract it. So if we have um, if we know that the size is now one, so we just need to sub tract half of the R val. Okay, so it's cool. So what I'm going to do is say at for every point, so at p dot x plus plus equals is that right? Or I say minus equals. Yeah, it says minus equals No, 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 no. I just say plus equals. And then I'm going to say rval minus equals 0.5. Okay, so what that does is it's going to subtract a half from this. So I'm going to do is PL plus RVAL, and then at P dot Y plus equals RVAL. I suppose we could separate these if we wanted for a right and a left, I mean a, a vertical and a horizontal one, but we're going to keep them the same just for that. And I'm going to try Alt Enter and stamp. Stamp, my stamp function is not correct. What is wrong with my stamp function? Call to unidentified function stamp. <sighs> okay, so let's look up where am I wrong with the vex? I thought it was. Okay, so pull up uh, here. All right, so I'm going to go vex stamp, stamp side effects. Copy stamping, vex surface. Copy stamping. No. Stamp. Who knows? Okay, there it is for... for the expression functions. Okay, so copying best practices for s copy stamping in VEX. And so here's a newbie question. Ooh, look at that. Sexy. Okay. Okay, PX plus sign stamp. Ooh, look at this. Everyone's just... Okay, stamp is... Okay. Oh, everyone's showing by example. These people are just having fun. What's the Dickens? I want the answer. Houdini Vex copy stamp. 
Art Station, Master Vex. All right, look at this. Okay. Oh, man, I can't see anything. Not a good day to be good. Okay, so rival, st uh, float rival stamp. Call to unidentified function stamp. Okay, is this... Uh, Okay, does this need to be reset? Is it because I'm creating something brand new here? No. Float rval equals set. So why doesn't it equal there? Something isn't right here. So let's just say, I'm pretty sure that stamp Okay, uh, maybe uh, we can't, maybe we're going to have to do this. Okay, maybe we're not going to use an attribute that I can't think of what it is. Call it demoitis. All right, I'm going to delete this. In Houdini, there's always more than one way of doing it. I think uh, I, we're going on the right answer here. So if we go to a transform, and I'm going to call this uh, scale leaf. All right. So for the scale here, Control E. So we can pull this on here. So this is. So we know we, we want stamp. We got stamp. There we go. So far so good. Open and close parentheses. Dot dot. Okay. Open and close double quotes. Dot dot slash. Copy one. All right. So far so good. And then what is the name of my parameter again? called ran scale ran scale ran scale okay that's a there yeah, ran scale and then we want the default value to be 0 okay and then what happens does this actually work so i'm going to try to just do to make sure that this actually does function So stamp, copy, ran, scale. So it's not happy either. So why are you not happy? Unable to evaluate expression. Scale X. It doesn't like it. Okay, why? Expression, edit exp toggle expression, expression, edit expression. Okay, stamp, unable to, oh, why didn't it tell me this earlier? Okay, it can't, uh, it doesn't like that. Okay, copy, stamp, okay, what am I missing here? Work with me, gang, here, work with me. Okay, does it tell me, okay, I need stamp, it's going to return float, and I'm going to need a string, string, and a float. Let me go st stamp dot dot slash copy one all right and we want it's ran scale all right we got that and so we want a value of zero okay does this work no <laughs> 
unable to evaluate expression, syntax error. Well, I'm doing something obviously very wrong here. Stamp, oh, maybe I don't need the semicolon. Is that what my issue is? Too many languages at once, okay. Yes, okay, so that's what's going on. Okay, so this is returning a value between zero and one on here. So, and we want to subtract 0.5 from it. So we're gonna go subtract 0.5. Okay, so we want to, to scale this. So right now we go, the scale is one, and then we want uh, the scale to either be uh, 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 so it's point, f okay, so minus point 0.5, and then we want it to be, so this is going to be between minus point 0.5 and point 0.5, but we want it to go point plus, okay, I know what's wrong here. We just need to multiply this by 0 0.5. All right, so it's 0 0.5 times, okay, that scrunched it. Okay, very good. So what I'm going to do is copy this. Accept, and then just paste it right in here. Okay, that scaled the leaf appropriately. All right, and now we should have a random scale for everyone. And let's go here, copy, right? Okay, let's go back up to the top level. Now we've got random size, do we have random size leaves? All right, we've got a little bit of randomness. Not a whole lot, but enough. Okay, so we can make that a little bit, and so we can modify these leaf scales times x times y if we wanted to play with this, but we're running long on time, so let's get, the, let's get out of here. So let's double check to make sure that this is working. I'm gonna go over here to output. I'm gonna go to save the disk. All right, now let's go ahead and go into UE4 and bring in our object, re-import, and now we just wait. And it is gonna, okay, while this is importing there, uh, we won't be able to need, we won't be able to meet next week. I will be out of town next week, so, um, we, we will return on the 17th of July. And on the 17th of July, what I have is lined up is one of the first uh, full uh, fine artists that uh, has ever used Houdini. Aha, uh -huh, this seems like it has definitely worked and I'm going to head and rebuild. And we're gonna be doing a interview with Douglas Leone from Singapore. He's a fellow that I met at SIGGRAPH Asia a few years back, and he's a really good fellow, and he is in charge of a small team of uh, Houdini artists inside of Singapore, and what they have done is something kind of monumental, is they've actually created a giant animation of the entire Book of Revelation, and Douglas is going to come in to us, and we're going to interview him, and we're going to talk about some of the issues that he had to deal with uh, when animating this entire sequence. So that'll be very, very interesting to see what the trials and tribulations of what he had to deal with it. Okay. Very good, and let's play this. Okay, so okay, we definitely have some action going here. Now there's a lot more that we could do in order to nut around with this. But I wanted to do is just focus on the basics of how to get the the primary function of the tree of the uh, of the tree going here and I think we've more or less done this as far as the basics are concerned. We could go ahead and nut around with this and art direct this to death, but I just wanted to get the primary functionality and I think we've succeeded. Okay. We gotta get going. The thus 
ends just another Houdini Secrets Live session. Have a great weekend. Have a great 4th of July. I will see you all in two weeks when we will have our interview with Douglas Leone. And after that, we are going to model a little bit of my favorite, uh, a little bit of California. We are going to see if we can model Malaga Cove. And for those of you who are familiar with La Malaga Cove, you're going, to go, uh-oh. And I said, that's right. That's right. We're going to be modeling Malaga Cove. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending. If you like what you see, go ahead and like what you see. Subscribe to my channels. And otherwise, have a great weekend. We'll see you later.